Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Southwell. Uh, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work at uh, Myrick O'Connell. I do nothing but elder law. This show is not about elder law, though. It's about the people that my friends Frank and Mary, whom I often talk about at my seminars, need to know in order to stay in their house if they want to just stay in their house and be buried in the backyard, <laughs> specifically if they're living here in Southboro. So it's who do you need to know, what programs you need to know about. Now, usually I'm sitting here with my wonderful co-host, Doug Peck, who lives here in um, Southboro, but this is clearly not Doug Peck. <laughs> Um, um, but he's coughing in the other room. So I said, but Doug, you gotta be, he said, no, I'll give you moral support. So he's in the other room. If you hear coughing in the background, that's Doug Peck. Um, with me here is Christine Alessandro. So Christine um, is the executive director of the agency that you have to know if you're in South or any of the other 13 communities that are covered by Bay Path Elder Services. So, Christine, thank you very much for doing this. Well, thank you for having me, Arthur. And and can you just so just start off for the many seniors who are like Bay Path? What you know is that what do you what do you do exactly? Can you just talk about that, right? Just what what is Bay Path? What kind of services are provided? Just talk about it. Well, Bay Path is known as an Aging Services Access Point or ASAP, an ASAP. and an Area Agency on Aging. And we have a. And by the way, those are two. The reason why the two different names, right? Because the ASAP is like the state name. Yes. This region's covered under a state. And then the, the AAA or the Area Agency on Aging is a federal name. Is a federal designation, yeah. yes. Then that was established in 1965 under the Older Americans Act. And who was president at that time? Lyndon Johnson. Yes, you and are what correct. What is the program that everybody knows this agency, this program for? Meals on Wheels. You got it. Everybody knows Meals on Wheels. Absolutely, and yeah. we are the Meals on Wheels people. So, Among many other things. Yes, we have a variety of programs and services, not only for older adults, but for caregivers, for younger persons with disabilities. So really anywhere on the age spectrum, we could provide a service for you. You don't have to be disabled to avail yourself of services. We have healthy living programs, evidence-based programs that help you perhaps deal with chronic illnesses or a matter of balance, which would help you improve your balance and gait and prevent that fear of falling. So, so we do a, a lot of things. There are a whole bunch of programs. And while you do, you do serve some disabled populations that are younger, right? Yes. Don't have to be disabled. All you have to be is old. Right? In not even to, necessarily. To, not necessarily to no. take advantage of your program. Of course. Okay. For an evidence-based program, if you're 55, you can certainly join in that program. You know, Christine, that's showing our age. So, because 55 really isn't that old. <laughs> right? But it's not 30. You no, can't be doing exactly. it when you're 30. But if you're 55 or older, you can be doing these programs. Mm -hmm. And so, where do these programs exist? Where do, like, where do, they, where do they happen? Right? Because, you know, obviously, if you've got a, a local program, it's at the senior center. So where do they happen? And also, if I'm a Southboro person, um, how does this? How do these programs connect with the Southboro Council on Aging? Well, we work. I think a lot of people kind of can get those confused. Yes, I know. We say it's the same church, a different pew. We are. We work alongside the Southboro Council on Aging. Yeah. We partner with the Council on Aging. Oftentimes, our area agency on aging grants money to Southboro. Yeah. But how you avail yourself of programs generally is calling our information and referral department and helping, getting someone to help you determine what your needs might be. For example, we provide in-home services for older adults. And it used to when be- When you say in-home services, what does that mean? Homemaking, personal care, laundry. So real people going into folks' homes. Yes. Right. And these, are, and these are supervised by you folks, or, or are they actually your people that are going into these homes? They're not our people. We yeah. contract with provider agencies in the yeah. community, and we provide the case management services, but we also help you manage your service plan. So you might need three hours of homemaking a week to help you uh, do your laundry, clean yeah. your house, or you might need some medical transportation, so we get that all coordinated for you. It used to be many years ago, several years ago, that you needed to be age, need, and income eligible for the home care program. 
There is no longer an income eligibility. There's no ceiling. So we really can offer our services to folks who may have more means yeah. than we could before. That's terrific. That's terrific. So people don't have to kind of figure out ahead of time, am I eligible? They exactly. Can just, so, so one of the things that we'll do on this show is we'll ask, we'll, we'll ask the folks who are producing this to do a banner that's got your information. It's got Bay Pass information and a phone number, maybe an email address. But, but talk to me about if I were interested in any of these programs, what do I, what do, I do first? Right? Do I do I have to call somebody? Do I mail in? What? How do I do this? Well, it all depends on the way you'd like to do it. Some yeah. people would like to get on the internet, and perhaps email and say, "I need some help. Can you give me a call?" Some people call us directly, and we have information and referral specialists that can help guide you and determine what you really are needing. And I say, worst case scenario, call me directly. Call I'll you. always help. I'll, I'll help walk anyone through the you process. You want to actually give somebody a phone number right now? What, what is that? You can number? get us at the main office, yeah. at, which is 508-573-7200. Yeah. Yeah. And you can even drop into the main office. It's not Absolutely. far away. Absolutely. No, right it's in Marlboro. 33 Boston Post Road You're right West. Route 20, when all your people aren't all across the street at the Apex Center, right? Right. Right. Kind of <laughs> yes. right, right. So, that's, so that's very convenient. Now, I know from experience that, that in many situations you'll, ask, you'll also or even send somebody to the house to really talk to somebody. Can you just kind of talk about that, talk about who your staff is and how all of that works? Of course. Our staff are trained professionals. Our case managers have degrees. They're required to have bachelor's degrees. So a case manager will come into your house mm -hmm. and do an assessment with you to really determine what your needs are and how we might be able to assist you. But in addition to case managers, we have nurses, we have options counselors who can help you sort through what your options might be to staying at home. Doesn't necessarily mean it's home care. There might be something else that could help you equally as well. They can just help you to stay at home. So it may, so it may very well be, even if you, you, you don't, aren't in a position where you feel comfortable with or especially need having people come at, to your home to help you with getting around or to help you with homemaking or even to do shopping, right? right. It may be that there are still things that you need to be learning from BayPath that they may have. Absolutely. Can, can, can you give some examples of that? Because I know oftentimes we'll do seminars and stuff and we'll talk about Frank and Mary um, and I always say, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and I would always tell people, you've heard that line, if you're old enough to be my client, or if you're old <laughs> enough to, to get that joke, you're old enough to be <laughs> right. my client. So if you're, a, if you're a, a, say, a healthy, a relatively healthy person, right, um, and you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, I really don't need anything, right, I always encourage them to call, among other things, just so that you can know who they are, right? so that if there's an emergency, now they already kind of know. But go back and talk about kind of the individual things that, they, that, that might help somebody who is an older person who is just at home. I know you were talking about, it seems to me you even talked to folks about Lifeline. You talked to folks about a whole bunch of different things that they might be interested in. Right. And the key that I have found mm -hmm. in working with older adults, and my mother is 86, she lives by herself and she has a whole host of problems, is to know what services are available before you need them. Right. So if you did call BayPath and you understood what we do and how you access those services, it will be easier when that crisis arises. But again, you don't have to be frail. You don't have to be low income. Perhaps you might be a caregiver of your 95-year-old mother. And we have caregiver services that are available to help you in your home. And so talk about those a little bit. Talk, okay. talk about, so I'm a because this is often happening, right? Right. So I've I've got a ton, a lot of clients, fifties and sixties, taking care of somebody, mm -hmm. right? They're the typically right. daughters, they're the mm -hmm. designated daughter, right. right? And their kids have grown up and they thought they were done, mm -hmm. right? But now, but they're not done. Not right? they're a taking care of mom. Shot. They're taking care of dad, and, and they're dying, right? They're just really. What can you do to help the life of a caregiver? We can help support you. We can give education. Mm -hmm. We can get you help you enroll in evidence-based programs to manage your stress, and we can help you get engaged socially in the community. Many communities now are becoming dementia-friendly communities, mm -hmm. 
and we have seen really an uptick in the number of memory cafes, which are opportunities for a caregiver and an individual with dementia to get out and have a social time, a great time with other caregivers and people with dementia. They're structured, they're unstructured, they're usually once a month in a community, and we have many in the Metro West area, which is nice because they also coordinate so that not everybody is the first Tuesday of the month. Right. So you can go to several memory cafes during the week. So that's really to support people, that you're not home alone, that there are programs and services to help you in this journey with your loved one. And, and if I'm a caregiver, is there, is there also something that just kind of connects me with other caregivers? Because I think one of, the, one of the things I just really experience a lot is I'm talking to folks, I talked to a lady this morning, she found, you know, her husband's got some memory issues. Uh, her husband is not excited about admitting that he's got a lot of memory issues, right? She's providing all care, and she's just literally saying, so kind of what, how do I do this? Like, what do I do? And then she's got two kids, mm -hmm. and they're far away, you know? And so, so it's like, you know, kind of how do I start that, you know? And that's and, where... And, and a lot of times it just seems like this has been figured out. You mm -hmm. know, for people who have gone through this, the, a lot of people have gone through these situations, so people can really help each other. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's fine. That's, that's where a caregiver specialist really comes in, because they have those knowledge and resources to help you figure out what you really need to do. Yeah. You know, because one of, one of our really gravest concerns in the caregiving process is the caregiver getting burned out and passing away before the care recipient. Right. And that happens so often. So to give that caregiver time for respite care, give respite to a caregiver so they can go out, get their hair done, they can go to the bank, the dry cleaners, sit and have coffee with friends. Take a break. That is yeah. so important. Yes. And you don't realize that you need it. You need someone to affirm that you need to take care of yourself. I told that, that actually I was having that conversation this morning. I told that lady, I said, you know, the worst thing that you could do for your husband is die. Because if you die, boy, his options now are really constrained because exactly. you know because he really relies on you, right? And mm -hmm. for you know for a ton of stuff, right? But so they have to take you have to kind of take care of each other. Absolutely. So now go back and talk about that matter of matter of balance because I've yes. heard you talk about that before. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about kind of the premise behind that and what what all of that is about. Well, as as we get older, and I put myself in that category, you find yourself eventually having a fear of falling. You know, I, I do. I, I think about, oh my gosh, do I have osteoporosis? Am I going to fall? Am I going to fracture a hip? Right. Am I going to fall and fracture an elbow or an arm? So you get a little bit more hesitant, a bit more careful. But if you could take a class that helps you overcome some of those fears and really helps you look around perhaps your house to say, yeah. what, you know, do I have a scatter rug somewhere that perhaps needs to come up? Or how can I make myself a little more careful in going outside? You know, how many times have we fallen off the curb? Right. You know, but right. that's it's more challenging as we get older because the incidence of injury goes up, incidence of traumatic brain injury goes up. Yep. So that's what a matter yep. of balance does. It helps you overcome those fears and and really think about safe mobility. And and. How does that occur? How does that education occur if you're interested in participating in something? Usually like it's a six-week session. We've yeah. held them at senior centers. We have held oh, them at oh, the Y. Oh. So, and we coordinate our pro programs with the Healthy Liver Living Center of Excellence, which is at Elder Services of the Merrimack Valley. Which but is it, another one of those ASAP. It's right? another ASAP. Yeah. It's one of my sister agencies. Yeah. But if you call Bay Path and ask for our Healthy Living program, someone can get you that information on all of our evidence-based programs. Usually they're later in the spring and the fall, and yeah. the winter is sometimes too difficult for folks to get out. Yeah, yeah, like really, you don't want to be falling on your way to your healthy living. <laughs> no, program. you no, don't. That'd be like really bad. <laughs> right. and, and I guess, finally, I know I, I often am dealing with folks who are kind of, who really have some problems, right? Who have got, especially who have got cognitive issues, who have got various diseases that cause dementia, the biggest one is always Alzheimer's, um, and who are therefore talking about how do I qualify for Medicaid, how do I qualify for MassHealth, and I always tell them, well, you know, to some extent, the gatekeeper for that program 
is Baypath Elder Services because it's you folks that decide whether a person um, has such issues that they either qualify for uh, nursing home care that MassHealth might pay for or that they qualify for a lot of home care mm -hmm. to keep them from going to a nursing home. Yes. So can you just talk a little bit about that? Because I know mm -hmm. that for, for many folks, I mean, it's not the conversation you want to be having. And I know one of the reasons I started doing these shows was we wanted to make sure that people who are at home right now, mm -hmm. right, who, who kind of can't get out, kind of know about this. Can you just kind of talk about that a little bit? Of course. Well, for Mass Health eligibility, mm -hmm. there are two components. One is the financial eligibility, which generally you deal with. Yeah. And BayPath will deal with what's called the clinical eligibility. Because Mass Health, when they have someone go into a nursing home under mm -hmm. the Mass Health benefit, they want to ensure that that person is sick enough, in essence, that Mass Health will pay for it. And that's called clinical eligibility. So you have to have a certain number of impairments of activities of daily living, mm -hmm. which are bathing, dressing, grooming, eating, or if you have dementia, that your dementia is at a certain level. And our nurses will go out and make that determination for the clinical eligibility. And, and they'll go right to the house. They go right, right to the house, yes. So, so whether you are still really healthy, right? Whether you're not so healthy, whether you have a friend who is having some issues, in all of those cases, you gotta talk to, we got, they gotta talk to you. Yes. Right? So thank you very much for all of this information. Um, every senior needs to deal with Baypath Elder Services. Every senior from Southborough should do it. You need to kind of know what their services are. You ought to give them a call just to have a sense of how that agency works. Um, I really appreciate Christine Alessandro coming on. Thank you. Um, we're going to have a, a second guest after a, a, a very short break, and we'll see you after the break. Thank you very much. Hi, and uh, welcome back to Frank and Mary in Southborough. Uh, I'm Art Bergeron. I have brand new guests now, uh, whom, once again, you really need to know if you're living here in this, in the boroughs area. Uh, they are Josh O'Beater and Regina Wolf Fritz. Yes. Um, Josh recently, uh, or Josh has a, has a and, and his, and his um, um, our, our good friend Doug Peck, uh, all work at Seniors Helping Seniors. But Josh also recently acquired this wonderful place in Marlboro, which many of you may know about. It was run for years by Tammy Pozzaricki. It's called Pleasantries. Uh, and Regina is now running Pleasantries. And Regina had actually worked for Tammy for a while yes. before and, and is now running the whole thing. And we want to talk about that program because it's just one of these hidden gems. People have no idea that how few of these places there are, right? And how great it is to be living this close. So I want you to talk about what the place is. And I'm just gonna start off by saying, so my uh, uh, sister's husband and several of my clients had spent time at Pleasant Trees. And it was the most wonderful thing in terms of allowing them, like my friends Frank and Mary, to live at home as long as possible. So talk to us a little bit about your background, how'd you get interested in this, and then why did you decide to, to get into this, get into this particular venture? And then can we talk a little bit about kind of what goes on at Pleasantries? How's that? Sure, yeah, well, well, thanks for having us on the show this afternoon. So Seniors Helping Seniors is a national organization that I started the Greater Boston Chapter of back uh, in 2014. And that really was sparked based on a passion of mine of connecting with older adults started with grandparents and volunteering in nursing homes and I had a connection. I, I had compassion and empathy for what they were going through. You like people like me. I like you, like, like, you like old people like me. I like old people. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Old soul always. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and with that, I realized that a lot of the people that I was visiting, including my own grandparents, were socially isolated. They were getting care, but they were not being able to have the conversations not be able to catch up on what's going on in the world with somebody uh, and 
depression kicks in, and it, it's, it's not good to be isolated. It's, it's really an epidemic right now in our country, especially as people are living so far apart from family. So Seniors Helping Seniors is this special model of companion-based care. We employ older adults to provide support to adults in need, often with cognitive impairment. But it's, it's not a medical model. It's a lot like going out for a meal, going to the movies. And um, that- Which is why I always love Seniors Helping Seniors, the notion of it. Exactly. Right, of, of, of being able to have a conversation, if you're another senior, with somebody who actually has some memories of songs and things that happen that are close to you. It's a big deal. It's History, big deal. music, movies, just what went on in the town when they were you know, younger children. So what that ability to right. connect is, is so important. And people often feel more comfortable with someone closer in age to them. It's a little more dignifying as well. And I had known Tammy for quite some time, and um, it, was, it was time for her to transition on to a new chapter. And Pleasant Trees, although it's a day program, has so much synergy with Seniors Helping Seniors in that it is a social model, uh, and that it really protects the dignity of the guests that attend. So Pleasantries, um, unlike traditional adult day health programs, is actually in a residential home. It's as if you were going to your friend or family's home for dinner. And that's what makes it special because it doesn't stigmatize um, the, the, the idea of needing to get help. And, and so talk, talk about, or tell us a little bit about kind of just how it, you know, how it works. What, you know, what, what is, what, what happens? If I'm a person, if I'm my brother-in-law, you know, and his and, and, and his and his wife, my sister, you know, and, and and so why, what would be the situation, my situation, which would cause me to want to think about going to pleasantries, and then if I go, kind of what happens, or 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 should we ask Regina? Regina will tell you yeah. a little bit about what happens. Yeah. I'll just briefly kind of summarize yeah. um, how the program operates. So just so for everyone's edification, a social day program, no one's living there. People are just coming for the day. People are Similar for to childcare for, for little children. Yeah. So um, the guests that come to our program, yeah. for the most part, all have some form of dementia or cognitive impairment. Uh, they may not necessarily have Alzheimer's disease. And they can come for an eight hour day, anywhere from two to five weekdays per week. And they'd like come like starting at what time in the morning? At beginning at 8 a.m. Oh, and they can People stay up until coming. till 5 p.m. And in terms of who's a good, a good fit, it, yeah. it's a lot of the people that attend our program have a spouse who's either working or they live with an adult child who's still working or their spouse just needs some respite time. I know you were yeah. talking about that earlier with Christine in terms of how important it is for caregivers to take care of themselves. We are a respite service, for lack of better terms, for, for families. Yeah. Uh, and But we do it in a, in a way that really engages the participants in our program so that they're really having a better day. So again, to you know, it's a social model. It's in a residential home. People yeah. can come and go as they please. No one's living there, and I think that helps um, ease the transition a bit. And ultimately, um, if they take advantage of resources like pleasantries, they will be able to still remain at home, live at home much longer. And that's what happened actually with clients of mine and then with my brother-in-law. I would say that in both of those cases, in, in each of those cases, their ability to stay at home was probably extended by a year, two years, mm -hmm. a big deal. And I know kind of, because everybody's goal, certainly Frank and Mary's goal, is you want to live in your house until you die. So to, to be able to have that opportunity to live in your home perhaps until you die, right? And, and, and if not, at least to have lived as many days as you can in your home is just, is really crucial. Absolutely. So, so let's ask, ask Regina about, so how did you get interested in doing this exactly? And, 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 and what is it that you do? Because it is, <laughs> for folks, for, you know, once again, I was always amazed when I would talk to Tammy about this yeah. and I'd say, it was such a good model, I'd say, so where's the next closest one? And she'd say like Wayland or Boston. I'd say, yes. how could this be that more, places with this kind of model have not come to exi into existence. So talk a little bit about kind of how you got to do this and what you do. How's that? Yes, so how I got to do it, again, like through family relations um, that I got interested in working with the elderly. 
And uh, so I switched fairly late into this kind of uh, industry. Yeah. And, uh, but I was clearly out to look for exactly this home setting. This is what I was from the outset. I, I love small. I think it has yeah. a lot of advantages. And so... And had you worked in like nursing homes or anything before? No, this? I actually, like Josh mentioned, my background is in horticulture. And I, is in horticulture? Yes, in horticulture. I used to work at the Native Community Organic Farm for 15 uh, years oh, as a oh, oh, coordinator, oh. Yeah. working with children. And, but I got the biggest kick out of working with the families. And then when I saw, hey, I really love to be with the elderly, and uh, I can bring my administrative skills and, uh, yeah, my love to work with the families, um, I actually went back to school. Got my master's in elder care management from LaSalle College. Yeah. And during that time, I was trying to get as much experience in adult day programs because I always was, I was interested in adult day. And I finally found, when I was looking for an internship and a job, I found Tammy online talking to you. Oh, that's funny. On this channel. And that's I said, funny. this woman does exactly what I want to do. I reached out to Tammy. I was lucky enough to work with her for 10 months, 11 months, yeah. um, then finished my school. And, uh, and now you're doing that. In October, I got a call from Josh if I would love to come as in as program director. And the rest and is history. It, you know, <laughs> it's, it, isn't it amazing how th yes. sometimes things just work, you know, yes. how things just, you know, you, you, you wonder if everything is kind of managed in some way. <laughs> things just sometimes work out. So. So talk about what, for, for, from the perspective of a person who is first coming in. And by the way, as I had mentioned with Christy and Alessandro early, we'll try to do a banner on the show that, for, for the, and we'll ask the folks here to, to, so that they've got you know, your address and the, and the phone number and the email address and stuff. But if I'm kind of thinking about this, right, mm -hmm. t tell me about what, what I would experience if I were there, there for a day. So I'd get there maybe at Eight or eight thirty in the morning, yep. right? Let's say you walk. And by the way, you don't have a bus, right? So I'm driving. Somebody's got to get there. Yes. Somebody's got to get me there. Yep. Okay. So I, I get there, get and then there. kind of, you know, how many people are there? What happens? So let's say you walk in in the morning. It's yep. eight thirty, and um, you would walk in, be greeted by one of our care partners, yep. and um, everybody trickles in between eight thirty eight and ten o'clock. Um, we sit, oh, that's, we a, sit, that's a real range. It's a yeah. range. People arrive between 8 and 10. And, I uh, just mentioned that because so many seniors, especially if you're having some cognitive issues, exactly when you get up yes. can really vary, right? Yes. And, um, you know, we have this big farm table in the middle of the dining room, and we all gather around that. We start with a healthy breakfast. So we serve breakfast, we serve lunch, we cook in-house, everything. Mm -hmm. We start from scratch. Um, with a healthy breakfast, we read the newspapers. We, it's normal. We're just trying to have a very normal day. So we. S you read the newspaper. We read the newspaper together, pick up interesting stories. So you read the, some of the articles out loud? Yes, whatever strikes our interest. I see. And I see. Uh, so we just take our time and have a very relaxed breakfast. Um, once everybody's in, we move slowly to our sunroom. We have a wonderful sunroom um, at the front of the house. And um, our care partners are all trained in Ageless Grace, which is an exercise program. Age with Grace? Ageless Grace. Ageless Grace. Ageless, Ageless Grace. Grace. Yeah. And so every morning we get our body and mind going. This is a program that really um, works with the mind, with the body. Yeah. And so everybody gets, we wake up and they greet the day. And so the morning we put together, try to put together programs, activities that uh, challenge us physically, mentally, conversation, have conversations with each other. Um, going on to lunch, we sit again, we have, we just have a very, what is special about, I think this is what shows the program, the specialty is, we don't, the care partners are, are the key. I think there's two things, it's the home setting, it's like the yeah. foundation of the program, and the care partners is literally the, the structure, the, the timber framing. And everything else on top is like, you know, we can be really creative. And uh, the care partners, what is so special is... And the care partners are who? This is our staff. That's your staff. And they are really and are multifunctional. How, they and, and there are how many, how many people who are there, typically? We are about two to three. We have two care two. partners 
and one designated cook that comes in. I get it. I get yes. it. And that's for, for, for a total population of folks, uh, visiting, visitors that may be how many people? We are up to 15. We up, to 15. up to 15. So it's two or yeah. three people yeah. ju just de dealing with this very, very small group. Yes. So you've got the care partners. So yeah. And the care partners, um, they're not there to put on a program or to serve a meal. It's about being together. We literally spend the day together and make it as good as possible. So lunch, we all sit together. We share the meal, yeah. um, which I've never experienced in any other setting. And it, it is very special and it's... There's so much natural conversation just getting started, sitting around the table. And, and then of course, that's mm -hmm. where a lot of people spend a lot of time. We and do especially spend a if you've been retired then. for a while, if you've been living with your partner, right, or your kids come over. Or whatever. And I know from growing up, we were in a big family, but that's where you spend all your time was around the dining room table yes. or the kitchen or whatever. They yeah. love this. We love the table, and, and there's no rush. And like, again, this is where small is so beautiful because. We run the day just, it can literally organically grow what we do. Of course, we have a structure, we have a, uh, uh, we have an outline what we want to do, a rough outline, but we can yeah. change it and adjust it to whoever is there that day and whatever the needs are. And I suppose because your population is so small, mm -hmm. y as you say, you can literally adjust it by the day, yes. depending on kind of and who we do. shows up. Absolutely. Because you've got different talents that are coming in and different backgrounds and different stories yes. that can be told. We bake stuff. on the days that we have our baking crew in and we, and uh, yes, we adjust it. We do like history programs where we know people have a strong background uh, yeah. and they can contribute. So. Yes, it's incredibly flexible. And you all, and you makes also, it rewarding for all sides. And, 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 and so this is from being in a big family. I always interrupt. You know, it's just, it's just a bad. Help. I come from a big family. So, so, <laughs> so, so, but you also told me that you that you on a typical day you'll also go outside for a yes. Week. So after lunch, there's always a group that goes out for a walk. I'm a big believer in being outdoors. I think yeah. it has so many therapeutic benefits. And so there's always a group that goes for walks, even in the winter, as long as you know the sidewalks are right. clear. Right. And we're hoping to be able to use our outdoor space much more coming um, in the future. Yes, we had, so we had talked about that yeah. a little bit beforehand. So you're trying to design a safe outdoor yes, space, yeah. so folks can literally be staying kind of in the in the yard, in a, in a space where you know, they be safe. And they most importantly, safe. independency. That it's not always, this is our big advantage, we don't have to move the whole group from one space to another. There's fluidity. We really can allow people to, if you need a break from everybody, and we do need a break somewhere. Right. We have a quiet well, area. In any family, you know. We can, and if you need to just get some fresh air, that you can go outside. So That's pretty terrific. I remember, so I remember um, one of my, uh, my brother, my sister telling me once that she went to uh, pick up my my brother-in-law, and at the end of the day at, at Pleasantries, and she said, so how was your day? Oh, it was the best day. I had a great time. What did you do? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no memory. But you know, the, the point of that to me is, the point of life is not to remember, right? to be able to do the New York Times crossword puzzle. The point is to be happy and yeah. feel like you're worth something, right? And, and, and to, ha to come away from that day with that, ex that's the point. Absolutely. That's the point, you know. It's not to not have Alzheimer's. You get, it's like saying, I don't want to have cancer. Well, yeah, I get it, you know. But the point is to live that day as good as it possibly be, can be, right? And I think what you're doing is you're giving people that ability to live that day while also being at home. So you're really giving that both to the caregiver and to the person. Who, and, and, as, and the nice thing about having a group of people who all have memory loss is that it's a joke. Then among the folks who have memory loss, it's a joke. You know, you don't have to be embarrassed nope. about it because because nobody remembers the end of the joke that you just told. You know, so you can tell it again. You know. Yeah. So, I, I you know once again I can't tell you how much I appreciate you both coming on. I think it, it, it just feels like you've become a real gift to our community, which we, you know, when, when Tammy was thinking of leaving, I was like, oh, this is too bad. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. So what you're both doing, thank you very much. Once again, stop in at this place. Just stop in at this place, right? Just see it Maybe before you need it, right? Just mm -hmm. stop in so you get a sense of whether this would fit, right? Because it, it, it's close. You're in South Grove here. It's easy to drive to. It's right between... You know, off of Fort Meadow between Marlboro and Hudson, it's very close. 
um, you will not regret it. Thank you very much. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you for watching today, and we look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in South Park. Thank you. Thank you.